Hi all, our notable game today is another fantastic game involving our world chess champion Magnus Carlsen who was playing black in round 7 against Pavel Eljanov. Pavel Eljanov is a Ukrainian chess grandmaster. He won two team gold medals and one individual silver medal at the Olympiads among his other huge range of achievements. He was also one of Boris Gelfand's seconds in the World Chess Championship of 2007 and in the Candidates Match of 2011 and in the World Chess Championship of 2012. He was also on the other side of the fence, one of Magnus Carlsen's seconds in the World Chess Championship of 2013. So does he have inside information about Magnus perhaps to use? Uh, so here he's playing white against Magnus in round seven and plays d4. Magnus plays knight f6, c4, we have e6. So will white allow the dreaded pin of the Nimzo Indian defense? Or we'll sidestep that. Sidestepped now, knight f3. And we have a very solid move d5 here. g3, so it looks like a Catalan system. Bishop b4 check. Bishop d2, a disruptive check. Putting the bishop here interferes with, with white's control of d4. Seems as to the untrained eye to waste the tempo, but it's it's a sophisticated little nuance to disrupt white's most natural piece development. We have bishop g2, both sides now castle. And quite often here, c6 is played. This is the most popular move by far over 2,000 games in this position. Uh, for example, just to show you, c6, queen c2 is quite popular, b6, black's problem bishop has to be resolved somehow. And this is an example continuation, but it looks a little bit passive, doesn't it? But anyway, here Magnus chose much rarer, about 300 games though, knight bd7. And now queen c2 is the main move here. And quite often now, black plays c6 over 1,000 games. Magnus, though, plays a very surprising move where there's only four in my book. So this might have been a bit of a shocker for Pavel Ozhanov already. Knight e4. So black is exploiting the fact that the knight hasn't uh, gone to c3 yet. Black can do this without losing a pawn or anything. But isn't that moving a piece twice? What about the queen side? It's also threatening to win the bishop. Is white bothered about that? Actually, white did seem to be bothered and played bishop f4 here. And the bishop on f4 is a little bit of a tactical target to the g5 move, forcing move, which needs to be factored in uh, at various points now. This g5 is a forcing move which could do something useful for black under the right circumstances. For the moment, black plays c6. Uh, if g5 here, actually white can play a move demonstrating coordination of queen and bishop. c takes d. So we have a loose knight and then f takes, then bishop takes. And it takes, it takes and what would be better. So c6, so reserving the forcing move for the moment, but it's not the sort of move you'd usually want to play with your king there, doesn't it just weaken the king? So white perhaps was not too worried about that forcing move possibility and challenges this pesky knight on e4. How dare Magnus do this? This knight e4, what is this? Knight c3 is played. Now here, funny enough, Max didn't move his knight, didn't support it with f5. He actually counterattacked white here with that forcing move g5. What is going on here? How does this work? Well, white can't afford to take on e4. He'd just be losing a piece. Surely, after takes, two pieces attacked. That's no good. So the bishop goes back, but where? It actually went back to e3. Of interest maybe to consider 
is c1 going all the way back to c1 is not so dumb necessarily for example f5 b3 is possible and it looks as though white's pieces are actually okay the bishop could even come here to hit the rook and this should be fair enough for white this looks like a kind of dutch stone wall set up and um, bishop seems okay there but yeah in the game it went actually to e3 which looks fair enough as well doesn't it actually Magnus plays a very very interesting move here which kind of echoes that the bishop might have an issue on e3 knight d6 not only hitting c4 but the knight can come to f5 now swing to f5 putting pressure on both e3 and d4 and note that with g4 as another forcing move the d4 pawn could become vulnerable later white here plays b3 in this position and we do have this knight f5 and yes this is slightly annoying because now as well as threatening to double the pawns maybe also g4 first is interesting as well and maybe even just build more pressure on d4 later with say bishop f6 is also possible so white here did something radical pavel Oljanov encouraged the knight to take on e3 we're playing g4 so we have knight takes e3 f takes e3 is white's idea just to have a bit of dynamic pressure and to liberate the center with e4 if that is the case e4 is maybe a significant intention here which black might want to try and dissuade there's that issue and there's also this issue here this bishop is not so brilliant in this position so there's two issues to address and this is a fantastic magnus colson move now at move 14. can you guess what black plays which kind of has an influence for both these issues what would you play here with black an absolutely fantastic move if i give you five seconds to pause the video starting from now okay b5 in one respect it's threatening b4 which would reduce white's control of the e4 square or even just the take on d5 and weaken white structure a bit take on c4 yeah and you might think well isn't it just losing a pawn b5 white doesn't really want to get involved in taking this pawn he actually carried on with e4 in this position but let's imagine instead of e4 let's imagine white did take on b5 then actually c takes and say knight takes here queen b6 this position starts to be very, very interesting the wrench of double pawns look quite unfortunate here and this pressure actually looks quite nice with black playing things like this and maybe this soon so for example this rook c8 it just looks unfortunate for white this position too much pressure would be built up it seems in this line uh, so yeah it seems as though it was just ignored just ignored with e4 which gives magnus uh, the choice really uh, does he want to take here or play b4 magnus actually chose to play b4 which clearly has some influence over the center control the more materialistic b takes is favored by the engines just to snap off a pawn in this position but uh, if we look at this intuitively it looks as though these these double pawns aren't of great value when it's got his central control this bishop's going to still be blocked in for a while it doesn't in some respects look that appetizing and while it's still got this pressure on the f file and the g pawn and there's still some vulnerabilities here is this easy to play for black I'm not entirely sure so Magnus actually played b4 here trying to disrupt white's central control and the game takes a very very sharp turn now if the ordinary this wasn't played if the ordinary knight a4 perhaps black plays d takes c4 
and after say b takes c5 and this looks quite nice for black this position here things look under control this knight looks a bit strange on the rim black looks to have a lot of pressure and the bishops have got uh, targets and also if we look at now um, instead of b takes c4 queen takes c4 here bishop b7 and it still looks okay for black so actually white <laughs> after b4 does something really radical pavel eljanov played and you might remember he's had some fantastic games we've featured on the channel there's one against nakamura where he sacrificed a piece uh, dynamically he's had some very dynamic aggressive uh, games he plays a very dynamic aggressive move against Magnus Colson here. E takes d5, sacrificing an entire piece. He's trying to maybe use the weakness of this diagonal and this loose piece and the weaknesses around Magnus's king. Should Magnus take the piece on c3? Well he does. We have d takes c6. And now here's where a lot of fun can happen if black's not careful a lot of fun from the white perspective Ben's played knight b8 here which looks strange to put the knight back on its start square all the pieces are going back to the first rank here apart from the bishop in this position what is Magnus doing well there's method in the madness if he plays knight f6 it looks as though c7 is quite dangerous here queen takes Knight takes g5, hitting both a8 and h7, threatening things like rook takes f6. This is dangerous for black. This might have been uh, one, one of the ideas, actually. For example, h6, rook takes f6, threatening mate. Take off the knight, rook h6, threatening mate. If f5 takes the rook and white's just much better. Yeah, but uh, knight b8 is a better test then keeps hold of the g5 pawn stops a lot of the naughty business however now queen e4 threatening c7 to win uh, the rook and other stuff okay so here we have a forcing move f5 g takes e takes and we have queen d5 check so it seems as though white has very very dangerous pawns if this was a crazy house game where you could drop pieces on later these pawns would be very useful but no we're playing classical chess are these pawns useful here Mengus might have a plan of trying to uh, blockade these pawns on the dark squares or trying to win the d5 pawn either blockade or win d5 is desirable knight a6 so this has ideas like knight c7 knight b4 we can influence that d5 pawn at least set up a blockade we have rook ac1 and then we have knight going to c7 hitting d5 white protects d5 with knight e5 and now it's desirable actually not just to rest on the laurels of the blockade but to try and win d4 this next move by magnus f4 suppresses e3 so actually making knight b5 a dangerous idea if there's no e3 how does white actually defend d4 especially if he's about to take the rook uh take with the rook the pawn on c3 this would be nasty wouldn't it he didn't actually take the c3 pawn here um white actually played knight c4 so it threatens d6 among other things that's the principal threat and that was addressed here with rook d8 but before we get into that let's have a quick look at this rook takes c3 knight b5 isn't there rook d3 actually here knight d6 we settle with a blockade in this position and black is essentially a piece up this should be quite good for black so anyway <clears throat> after knight c4 yeah putting black on the defensive rook d8 now rook takes c3 but the d5 pawn can be taken knight takes d5 things are very sharp white now plays c7 okay 
Now, taking the rook doesn't seem like a good idea with the check here, and then winning the other rook, for example. So knight takes c7. Thankfully, for Magnus Carlsen, protects the rook. So we're getting two bishops with black for a rook here. After bishop takes, knight takes. White has three minor pieces and a rook. Against white's two rooks and one minor piece. Okay, so it's interesting. Two bits for the rook, but also the pawn situation. Three, five, three, four. Black is a pawn down. We have e3. Now, what's interesting about this position, it seems actually quite nice for the bishops here. The bishops start attacking things. Bishop b4, attacking the rook. Rook c7. And here now, bishop b7, lovely diagonal for this one. And trying to undermine the sense, you know, taking here, then that looks really quite dangerous. And if the bishops cooperate like this, this is going to look extremely dangerous against white's king. White played h4, trying to break down maybe black's king safety. But another forcing move, bishop e4, we have rook h2. And now this knight on a8 is not particularly well placed there. It comes into the game with a vengeance, knight b6. We have knight e5, but now the center is collapsing. F takes e3, not worrying about this. H takes g5. The center is collapsing. Rook takes d4. There's all sorts of ideas here. We have knight g4 to go to f6, maybe. This is actually parried with another centralizing move, knight d5. And here, it's also, by the way, protecting the pawn. Here, black's a lot better, but white actually. Yeah, it was convinced also to resign in this position instead of playing the 35th move. He resigned after move 34, 95. Let's have a quick check of this final position. Is it that bad? Yeah, these bishops do look menacing against a rook. Yeah, if we factor the two bishops versus a rook here and this pawn here, so it's actually equal on pawns. Let's say rook. A1 is a suggestion. Bishop f3 hitting the knight. Where does the knight go? If it goes here. Bishop d1, and actually we've got this pawn uh, crashing through with e2 winning more material. That's hopeless for white in this position because of e2. Yeah, so rook a1, and if if say, say another move, knight f6, we can take, g takes. In this position, with the pawn handling an escape square for the king, rook d5 is nasty for rook g5 check. Threatening actually mating 6 there, technically. How does white parry this? If you've frozen this token check, king f8, rook g5 is coming with this pawn there and the bishop here. This is menacing uh, coordination against the king. And if rook f4 to give uh, f1, actually stronger might be now rook d1 check and just taking bishop d3 check, the two bishops against the rook, but unless e2 is winning that rook soon. How does black stop this? Yeah, it does seem pretty hopeless for knight f6 check for sure. And rook a1. I mean, the top moves. Rook c1 is another mention. Let's just do rook d2 here. And the threat is, well, e2 and even bishop c5 is threatened because rook d1 is mating there with the bishop and pawn, cutting the escape squares. So what does white actually do in this position? Best move would appear to be to give up the knight, which doesn't seem too healthy. Uh, if, if a check's thrown in, yeah, again, giving up the knight. Yeah, if, if just to show the dangers, you know, e2 is just crashing through. If here, rook d1. Yeah, it's just winning material. 
Yeah, it does seem pretty hopeless. It seems as though there's a few factors here. White's king safety, this very advanced pawn, king safety and the advanced pawn also performing part of the mating nets. It does seem pretty hopeless in this position after knight d5. So got just one or two more possibilities. G6, probably not hg because then actually white's back in the game fully <laughs> with knight h6 check that's something to avoid if here this actually white's mating black maybe that's something that could have been tried <laughs> or magnus no that's not the way to do it on g6 although maybe that should have been tried if it was a blitz game especially black played takes here and threatening Rook takes g4 check now. Check here. Yeah. Say knight f5. We're left again in a bad scenario with this pawn, if nothing else. Here, black can play either knight f4, rook d1 check, rook d2. And just going to take and play e2. This pawn and knight and bishop is no match for, the, for one rook. Here, uh, so say say the rook moves, then e2 is, is going to be again winning. If the rook doesn't move, then e2 again. It's it's all pretty hopeless. King h8 is possible because the bishop's covering there. And again, it's a disaster because of the pawn. So yeah, uh, it wasn't it didn't seem that early to resign here after knight d5 but maybe just to make it clear for spectators i don't know a few more moves could be played but no it's, it's pretty crushing it's pretty crushing this position uh white seems helpless overall against this advanced pawn and the king safety issues so yeah a very interesting game uh from magnus colson there the innovation in the opening especially the early knight e4 and then the forcing move g5 looks to be uh, razor sharp stuff but uh, yeah the bishop turned out to be a target on e3 and of course white was trying to maybe get dynamic f file play and to play e4 to liberate the position but then this very quick response b5 energized black's position uh, to give some counter pressure again against the center with b4 you'll note in this game there was both g5 with ideas of g4 and b5 with ideas of b4 as well as bc so on both sides you know black magnus colson was undermining indirectly white central control sniping at both sides of the board so a very very interesting energetic game actually for flank pressure how it influences central control i think we can all get something from this game and yeah quite artistic in a way how white basically did collapse later in the center with white having this uh, marvelous central pawn and white having king safety issues now okay comments or questions on youtube thanks very much